Good morning, afternoon, evening, good night, wherever you are on the planet. We're uh, this is Steve Holzer with BIM Object, sitting in our U.S. headquarters in Burbank, California, the broadcast capital of the world, which makes it quite appropriate for us to be talking to you today. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so this is meant to be a quick overview of uh, the front end is going to be digital content. Why? Why does it matter? What is digital content and what is this stuff that we're talking about these days and BIM and everything else? Without being a deep dive, it's going to be a very quick overview of um, kind of why we exist as BIM Object as a platform, as an organization, and what we're doing to uh, help move the building industry, actually the full building life cycle, the built environment, to a digital uh, lifetime. During our uh, time together today, Digital content, it's really the DNA. One of my colleagues, uh, Mark Haddad, had, had came up with that uh, concept a while back, and, and it's really the DNA of today's built environment. Uh, it is the content. It, it, it's the pieces and the parts. Any questions that you have um, that we don't have time to answer during the webinar, I got uh, Marcos Molina, a colleague of mine here, monitoring the, the chat and question boxes, so uh, feel free to put those in. Uh, as you see on the right there, I got a screenshot showing where the questions and chat boxes, what they look like. They're, they're in your control panel on the go to webinar. Um, but anyway, throughout the day, anything comes up or throughout the, the webinar, anything that comes up, put in there. And any, any of them that we're not able to get to uh, while we're on the call, we'll be responding to. Uh, just just keep the questions going there. Um, this, this will be recorded or it is being recorded. And it's going to be available to not only you guys, uh, you folks as attendees, but also anybody that wasn't able to make it that signed up, um, as well as you can share the link uh, afterwards with, with your colleagues as well. So gets the word out. In the year 20 BDC, you guys all know when uh, BDC is, right? Um, before digital content. Um, we had this uh, fantastic process of uh, painting on our cave walls to communicate what we intended to do. Uh, we've moved beyond that, and not too distantly ago, we began using these really fancy tools uh, to try to explain uh, and communicate in how our designs were to be completed, and uh, this was how plumbing was put in. So this was content uh, a couple decades ago. Unfortunately, it still is occasionally today, but this was a content provider. Um, we have another content provider here. This is how furniture was, was included in a design. Um, the challenge here is that we, we really have no idea what the flame spread is on the textiles of those chairs, um, nor do we know what the weight is nor do we know uh, anything about any of the connections that go on with the, the plumbing fixtures. All we know is kind of roughly where they sit. So we had versions of drawings and specifications that were, were created out of those things. And, and this was yesterday. So everybody was kind of supposedly working off the same, but there were usually multiple versions. So what's happening today to those current processes that we just saw is, is really they, they, they got to be destroyed or exploded. We, we talk about disruption, but we've been disrupting this industry for, for so long with digitalization that um, we, we really uh, have, I, I talk about rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic. Uh, disruption to us and to the building industry largely means that instead of uh, handing a roll of blueprints off or, or, or mailing a roll of blueprints in a spec book to somebody, we're emailing them a PDF. And that's not really disruption. It's still paper-based thinking. It's still something that has to be interpreted. So digital tools allow us to do that. And in data, we trust. So it's really about the data. It's not just lines anymore. It's not just the drawings. Those were just a tool of communication. It's the data that, that, go, that accompanies those that was often in multiple versions in multiple places in, in, in the past. So digital content allows us to bring it together. So as I said, processes are being replaced, and we now have all these new acronyms, VDC, IPD, BIM. I mean, there's new ones every day. Um, and, and this is what I think is important for us to, to understand some of these terms, uh, not just as terms, but a lot of people say, oh, Steve, that's just semantics. But semantics are important when we're changing because that helps us adjust how we think about things. We can't. We, we talk, a lot of people still say drawings, and, and I'm kind of known... Um, uh, and maybe not so fondly sometimes in the office, they say, I say drawings, you mean model. You know, so these kinds of things as change agents and, and even all you on the call today, part of the new processes, we need to 
kind of unite on how we talk about this industry and what we're doing. Uh, digital content is the currency of the built environment. So no longer do we do feasibility studies and estimates where we're doing takeoffs. And you know, back in the day, they highlighted different walls as they counted doors and, and, and things like that. That was an estimate. Now we can we have a data store because we use digital content creating that to actually build the facility. We're able to, to extract it as cost definition. So now everybody, all those same actors that we had before looking at multiple versions, all are impacting it at different times. Um, they're using the content and impacting or embellishing that, that cloud information store uh, at each of their respective disciplines, what they're doing. And this, this allows for a, another term that, that Stefan Larson, our, our founder here, um, ha, has uh, educated me on. It's called the um, uh, unbroken information flow meaning that everybody is seeing the exact same content, no matter what their role is, no matter what part of the building process, or even the full building life cycle it is. Uh, it could be a, a facility manager uh, 10 years uh, after the building has been commissioned uh, at, at a university, uh, an architect has, has utilized uh, digital, digital tools and digital content to build a digital model, um, and, and that's still available to them to be uh, understood what, what's in the system. Another big piece that's happening today and changing is in the engineering. Uh, we, we have these a lot of tools that are coming to the forefront of you know computational fluid dynamics and a lot of these other cloud platforms that need that they need to consume. They can only really work with digital content. They can't use uh, a generic HVAC system and and run uh, real time um, digital fluid dynamic simulations or virtualizations with uh, a generic one. So what we end up with is real data connected to real content and, and different people need different types of data and content, but it's all a piece of it. Um, a lot of you know of Kobe in, 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 in uh, uh, a lot of government projects here in the US and certainly globally, um, Kobe data is, is asset based information and, and that's a different piece of the content and, and that's it commissioning. Uh, the early design phases, they don't really need Kobe data. So how do we manage all this and, and keep it as an unbroken information flow? So uh drawings you know they're being replaced and now uh, there's really no one using pencil and paper anymore for a while there we were using electronic pencils and papers and we were essentially creating lines uh that got converted to paper but really now we are constructing a virtual uh building before we're building it so it's a new new built world order um it's internet internet-based platform but it all has to fit together you know i think one of the reasons vdc has come to be known is uh, a lot of times in the early design phase, um, there was a lot of placeholder content put in place uh, in, in, and generic. I'll talk a little bit more about requirement objects is what we look at as replacing generic, but without getting into brands, but still um, they had to fit together. The, 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 the construction manager or, or the field, they didn't have a choice, it had to work. So what they're doing now is using the, the advantages of virtualization and digital tools to actually construct that building digitally first because they can figure out what's not working, not exactly what doesn't fit together. But again, the key, the foundation, digital content, you have to have it. So uh, it's used, as I as said, through all the stakeholders in, in every aspect of it. Uh, so now the, the field is even using the same digital content. Um, the, the owners and the operators, the, the facility managers are using that same digital content for infinity if, if need be, uh, or through the full building life cycle. So what that ended up creating by everybody using that is a digital twin that ends up being, uh, I like to say, I call it an organic, living, dynamic, almost breathing <laughs> digital twin of an ongoing facility. And that even allows a platform for a lot of IoT and, and so forth. The building owners are starting to demand this, especially serial building owners, the large uh, owners of, of restaurant chains, hotel chains, universities are all demanding this kind of of uh, assets be tracked in a digital format. And, and again, it's not just the visual aspects of it. I mean, that's cool and, and it's helpful to have that digital uh, three-dimensional geometric user interface that you can see and, and play, but it's the data that's behind it. It's what's really going on with the building. So it's back to, they build it twice and build it right. When I was a, a vice chair of the market education team with the national, setting the National Business Standard version three back in 2012, we did a study and identified the greatest impediment to BIM implementation with the, the standard we were doing 
was the lack of real digital content of actual building products. So that's really changed, but not not enough. I mean, I, I, this is Steve's own un, uh, research by others. Uh, I, I'm submitting that we only have about 15%, maybe 20 on a good day, of all building product manufacturers' products digitally available for the building design and uh, construction and management community to, to use. So how do we help? One of the ways that we have been, obviously, how do we help uh, manufacturers get you, the designers, all of this digital content created, updated, and maintained? It's, uh, we have a, a, a product called BIMScript. Um, BIMScript is uh, a, a tool that allows the content, whether it be a, a faucet, uh, windows, uh, just about any, any building product, uh, fence, um, furnitures, to be brought in uh, right now, it, it functions primarily on a, on a platform, a 3D platform called Rhinoceros. But it, that, that particular object is created once parametrically in Rhinoceros. And then it's simultaneously, instantaneously output as um, a Revit, a 3DS Max, a Arca, Arca, excuse me, ArcaCAD drawings, um, AutoCAD, both 2D and 3D, IFC formats. These are all native file formats that are output. Um, the 3DS for Vectorworks to consume, um, FBX, OBJ, um, SketchUp. Uh, these, these are all the most popular. We will, we will be adding those, but this is part of what we're doing to help get you, the design community, um, uh, the tools or the content that you need to really, really utilize the, the digital advantages. So one of the things about BIMScript, it actually also generates uh, a 3D. So some softwares that, that folks have, or some may not have the actual install of those software I just went through. This allows this particular unit to be configured uh, in the browser uh, on the BIMOGIC platform, which, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit here, um, and, and then download it as that configured part. A, a, a lot of folks don't have software that allows them to configure a parametric, meaning multiple sizes or multiple finishes or multiples of a single product uh, within their modeling software, you can configure it on, on the BIMOGIC platform and, and download it direct. So now we're gonna go into a, a BIMOGIC, the, the actual live demo. That's what we really all came here for today. And what I'm gonna touch on is um, uh, the registration and downloads. Um, uh, what is BIM mail? What is the BIM board? What is business matching? Um, what modeling platforms are supported by BIM Object? Uh, how to use the search function? What's Evo? That's going to be a big help for uh, especially the design firms that we just uh, um, uh, released at AU uh, last November. And, and more of the BIM Object app plugins uh, that can actually change a, uh, a modeler's life very quickly. Okay, uh, <clears throat> this is the uh, the main screen for BIM Object. Whenever you come to the BIM Object platform. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into all the other aspects of it. You can find a lot of other information here about our, our apps and, and our features. Um, but primarily today, what I'm, uh, what we want to cover is, is a lot about how do you get content to consume and, and put into your models. So um, there, there's a lot of different ways, but uh, for now, we'll just hit Browse BIM Objects, which takes us to our, our primary search engine. And this is the browser-based unit. Um, I, I will touch on... Uh, Again, the apps, uh, the plugins, there are numerous ones available, ones for um, ARCHICAD, Vector, well, Vectorworks is actually built into Vectorworks when you get it. Um, the BIM object uh, plugin is in there. Um, Revit, AutoCAD, um, and ARCHICAD, they all have plugins. So anyway, um, this is the, the main search function. And a lot of people ask us, well, are, Steve, you got all these categories at the top. Why? What is that? And, and, and are they Omniclass? Are they CSI? Are they Uniformat? What, what, are, what do we got here? Um, these are what we call the BIM object buckets or, or primary classifications. Um, they purposefully did not follow, we did not follow any published standards because we are a global company, so we have standards all over the world. Now, we address and leverage all those standards, but a lot of people say, oh, I want to go look for master format or I want to look by Omniclass. Well, the, the, what we tried to do, since we have over 60 million articles, um, just think about that from a search perspective uh, and, and bringing up all those files for you, the, by picking a category first and foremost to go into, 
uh, let's go, we, we want furniture. We're, we're getting ready to, to uh, uh, put some furniture in, the, in this office. Um, once, if you notice, once I clicked a category, I got all kinds of additional uh, uh, filters on the left. And these are always your filters. So th this, this page has a lot of information on it that really helps you get done uh, your, your job day in and day out. So since I picked this filter at the top furniture, it, these are what filters you have picked or will show up in the bar right here uh, in my cursor. Uh, so each of those, um, any other ways we further drill down will, will actually show in there as well. And while I'm here, I'm gonna touch on a couple other things. Um, up in the top, uh, you can see I'm, I'm registered, I'm, I'm logged in. Um, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to log out for just a minute so you can see what it looks like without being. Um... So if you have not registered on Bimogic yet, it is totally free. Um, it, the download is totally free. You don't have to register to browse. As you can see here, we can go right back to the same thing, furniture. I can browse all day and, and I'm not even signed in. Um, the, the, the reason that we register, there's two, a number of reasons that you'll see as we progress here. But... Uh, our, our products have what are called call to home functions. So by, by you registering, we can, the, the download is uh, recorded and at, at all times it's able to, wherever model, whoever has that model, they can see uh, uh, tied back to the BIM object uh, platform through the cloud. Um, if there's been any updates to that model, if there's been any, that particular item, that particular building product, uh, as well as if there's new versions available, things like that. Um, also, uh, the, once you sign in and, and, or once you register, then, then you can sign, you cannot download until you are actually signed in. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and sign in on under another, if it'll let me, yeah. So let's just change. I'm just going to go to a, oops, wrong one, uh, Gmail, just a generic demo account that I use and um, so this would, would be the same equivalent and won't confuse me because it won't have a bunch of other things that other people have um, you know that I've done for the back end with my administrative rights but anyway up here this is the BIM mailbox so somebody's left me a message uh, under my login here um, so the, the BIM mailbox is uh, how you your email address when you register your phone number none of that is is actually given to anyone else uh, so in one of my demo accounts I got got a message here that, that somebody sent me a file type request uh, anyway this was just a uh, this is how we communicate sort of like LinkedIn um, it is the BIM mail system so you're not your email address your contact information is not exposed to the outside world unless you so choose to do that a lot of Manufacturers, uh, if you send something off uh, a BIM mail to a manufacturer or a sales rep or something, they'll say, hey, here's my email address on my phone. Just reach out to me. And there's other things available, too. Up here, you'll see this is what we call our, our grid menu. Um, uh, I, been, we're not going to go into BIM analytics today or anything else, but these are the wiki, there's a wiki there for any, any help and, and questions along those lines. So back to our furniture. We picked that. Um, you can see that we now have a whole different set of uh, potential. If you know what brand, if you know what you know categories, file types. If you're only interested in Revit, uh, if you're only interested in ArchiCAD, you can easily limit those. Uh, you know, if you you want to just just find um, we have 10,000 in, in, in Revit. Um, AutoCAD has so we'll hit apply and. Now, anything that we have here, so anyway, you can continue to drill down. At this point, we have, you know, different master format categories. We could say we only want uh, visual display units. And, and again, notice as I've added these different categories, I've got it, it keeps adding them in right across the top bar here. Uh, and I can get rid of those at any time, uh, just a one or reset them all. So this is a way to, to dig in, to, to find, you know, what you're looking for, how you're looking for it, you know, whether it's by brand, whether it's by type of material, um, uniformat, omniclass, 
We have been really working hard. A lot of building product manufacturers don't always understand the importance of classifications, multiple classifications, especially on the class with it being a, a newer classification. We've really been working hard to help the manufacturers understand how important that is to add that down to class categories. Um, they may just have a master format, uh, but with these other categories we know are, are more important to, again, the larger building team as they're we're working with this. A couple other housekeeping things here. This is the BIM board. The BIM board is uh, your favorites essentially. So you can add anything. So for this glass board depth face base face here from Claris, if I want to add that to my BIM board, I just simply click it and now it's red and uh, I can go to my BIM board and it shows that's saved uh, for me for all time. Uh, and you can actually share your BIM boards as well with others, with team, uh, across the team. So uh, one other important thing here, a lot of people will call and say, hey, um, I actually get these calls. Steve, we were missing, uh, uh, I actually got this from a, a, a SimScale, a software platform that's Computational Fluid Dynamics out of Munich, Germany. They called and, and uh, they loved the, the uh, HVAC units from uh, one of the manufacturers we had on our platform, but there were other parts of the system that, that weren't uh, available. And they, they would actually call us, uh, or you can do it here, fill out this missing manufacturer that, that there's something that you're looking for that you want added to the, the platform. So you can let, let them know. And, and the name of the manufacturer, what's, what systems you're using, everything else. Um, one other thing I'll touch on is file types. BIM object is, is, is file type or, or modeling software platform agnostic. We will host any uh, file type that a manufacturer wants to host. So it doesn't really, really matter. Uh, we're not um, focused as the world is getting more and more digitalized in the built environment. We see more and more file types being requested and used, especially even across a single project. We have uh, maybe SketchUp used in a really early design development. Um, it might move into a, a, an ARCHICAD or, or a Revit. And, and then even that model has other things overlaid over it later on in the facility management phase. So file types, uh, they're, they're all, many of them are, are available as well. Uh, let me, uh, excuse me, let me back up and exchange, uh, explain this search function. When you start typing, um, it actually looks at different, you know, uh, it's looking in within our BIM object categories, it's looking within brands, or the bottom one is the free text search. So the, the higher up that you can pick, the, the, the more precise that your search is going to actually be. But in this case, uh, I'm just going to go pick one of our window manufacturers. Um, and we'll pick one of their products. So I just clicked on this. I just clicked this Epic View Clad French. And this is what we call a product page. So this is really the heart and soul of what you're looking for to, to download content. And um, I'll, I'll go through kind of the layout here of, of what, what you're seeing. Um, so with this particular company, they have what we call business matching. And uh, a lot of times this is a, a fairly new feature by some, some measures. Uh, they're able to put their local reps now I'm logged in as myself. I'm sitting in our office in Burbank and my profile also says I'm in Burbank. So what it's doing is reading my profile and seeing who Jelvin says is available to answer questions in the Burbank geographic area. Um, so some, com some manufacturers may only have this at a, at a level of a country. It can go all the way down to zip code. So it just depends on where you've set up in your profile you're located. And, and the primary purpose of this business matching is you can reach it right directly to them. You can leave your number um, and say, hey, I'm, I'm interested in this. This, uh, you know, Can you tell me where I can find out about availability or pricing or uh, anything like that or any customizations? You can contact them through, through mail, and, but it goes through um, the, the BIM mail as well. Um, or you can call them direct and it'll bring up their, their phone number. And it's not directly interface. You just cut and paste that and, and or, or type the phone number in. So that's that's multiple ways to get information you need. I, we used to get a lot of calls. Now with this added, we don't get near nearly as many as, as we used to. Um, you can add this to your favorites again. You can share this particular product page. Um, uh, you can go into um, the product widget. You know, this is if you really wanted to embed this in a spec or you want to embed it somewhere else in another uh, web-based situation you, you could embed that product file and and, and look at it um, so these tabs at the bottom and you may see different ones of these on different products again it depends on what the manufacturer has decided 
that he's going to provide. Um, so the description is the first. Uh, that, that's kind of just the gener gener general overview of it. There are usually are links for uh, this particular one. It goes out to Gelwin's own site. Some manufacturers now use the, our site to, to, to showcase their products. Uh, but installation instructions are available. Any of these other product certifications, technical descriptions, these are all links uh, out to usually um, the Geldwin, or in this case, the manufacturer's site. Um, anything that's that's related, you know, uh, to these, uh, where where it's manufactured, uh, where it's designed, what's the main material, what's what's the the secondary material classifications. In this one, they've only got uh, the biology category and the IFC classification. I would suggest that they really probably should have a master format. Um, what regions is it available in? And property sets. And these are externalized property sets that we many companies use to in order not to build all these all this data into that file that you're going to download. So this particular one, um, it has I can download a PDF, I can download a Revit or a Revit type catalog. Uh, so they've chosen only to to put those in. We're seeing more and more people with the BIM script. Uh, coming to, to fruition and, and being more utilized by a larger family of content developers now, um, they're able to see that there are numerous people here, especially in the States, even using other Vectorworks and, and ArchiCAD and even SketchUp. So a lot of manufacturers are having, as their content gets updated and developed, they're having it developed in multiple file formats. So for you guys, the designers, to, to be able to utilize. So... Um, anyway, the download itself, uh, since I'm in the browser, when I click the download and, and I download it, um, it, if I were working in Revit, uh, I would have had to come out to BIM object and do what, just what we did to find this window and door and download it. Then I would have to go back into Revit and I, I would have to put this actual content into my Revit library, then go into my Revit library, pick it and insert it into the drawing. Um, for today's demo, I'm not going to do this, uh, but there are some videos out on our YouTube channel where we, the BIM object plugin, and it works very similar for ArchiCAD, SketchUp, Vectorworks, um, uh, AutoCAD, and, and I'll show you where to get those in just a minute. But those particular things, when you uh, are using the app within the modeling software, you don't ever have to leave that environment. So your workflow is greatly enhanced in, in not having to uh, come out, go browse. You're able to do all the browsing, all the searching, just like we just did. Uh, but you're able to do that within that that particular platform. So here's um, the page, the, the BIM Object Apps. It's in AutoCAD, Revit, ArchiCAD, SketchUp, and Vectorworks. And uh, these are all the they're they're all free. I will say that on the Autodesk, uh, the Exchange uh, .autodesk.com, which is their plugin platform. Uh, our our app, our download, uh, the BIM Object app has been one or two for numerous years. It is powerful. It is useful if you're using uh, any of those modeling software. I, I highly recommend that you you go out and download that and uh, look at at uh, installing that. Our Evo app. It's been extremely popular since we released it. It's actually exceeded our expectations uh, on many levels. So let me show you my screen again. And the beautiful thing about it, it's right here on the main page. It's even on the browse page to download, and it is a free download. So what this uh, Evo does is um, it's just a, a very lightweight, small app that um, allows you to actually uh, curate your own content, whether it, you, you can search just like we did with BIM Object, but it's very lightweight. And, and the beautiful thing about it is it allows you to um, simultaneously, not just uh, search like we just did on, on BIM object, it allows you to uh, bring in the content that you may have in your office, um, on your own system, on your own server, on your own laptop, on your own computer, and uh, organize it in here with, with t any tagging systems that you want. You can, you can add your own tags. Uh, you can add, you can create libraries of, of different content for different projects. Uh, it's really a powerful tool. 
to begin organizing it. I realize this is the first release. As you can see, it's version 0 0.2, so we still consider this somewhat of a beta. Uh, consequently, it's right now supports Revit and PDF as file types. Obviously, uh, we're file agnostic, and, and uh, the, that's our, our, our goal in the development cycle of this will bring on additional file types to be able to manage, but right now it's, it's strictly uh, Revit, but it is a great tool to use to begin organizing uh, a lot of your, your, your content there. Uh, you can reach me uh, if you have any questions direct, steve.holzer at bimobject.com. Um, again, Marcos, I want to check with you. Do we any other questions that came in while we were going through? At the end, uh, you will get a survey once this closes, just three short questions. Uh, appreciate if you could give us any kind of feedback that you have. We love any kind of feedback, good, bad, curses, comments, criticisms, doesn't really matter. It'll help us grow no matter what it is. So, and we're, we're here to, to help you grow too and, and, and move into this whole new world of, of digital building. Um, we, we say it's new, it's, it's been new for 20 years, but it's just now really beginning to come to its own where we're getting enough content where you're, we're able to actually create these digital twins and functional virtualizations, not just visualizations, but virtualizations visually as well as performance-based uh, to, to bring the built environment to uh, a whole new level of efficiency. Thanks a lot for joining us. Um, enjoyed uh, having you guys here today and hopefully uh, we'll have you on another one soon. We'll have some more uh, BIM, BIM object as well as BIM script webinars upcoming in, in weeks. So. Uh, Stay with us. Have a great day. Bye.